All right, welcome to episode seven of Behind the Seams, presented by Standard Issue Tees. Today, uh, today's episode, ha- I'm still kind of tripping inside the way that it's kind of all come about. Um, this is somebody that has inspired me for many years. Um, you know, we're sitting here, 2023s is 15 plus years from um, from when. I call notice of this gentleman's contributions on, in a lot of different realms. And um, they always left such a positive role with me. Uh, not for now, I always like really emulated his work. So, and, you know, especially in a, uh, when mediums were changing, you know, it was like things were moving. I'm from traditional skate side where things went from like print to just VHS tape mm-hmm you know, to this whole new digital realm that grew. And I feel like you are a very important part of it, especially in the realm of all the things that we love. So the fact that a DM and, or not a a comment landed this, uh, this segment, I'm, I'm, I'm very appreciative for. So Mr. Levi Maestro, thank you very much for coming on board with us. Yeah. Thanks so much. Um, as I, um, as I mentioned, I think what you guys are, <laughs> what you got going is real cool. So it's nice to join. Nah, thank, thank you for you. coming. Um, you know, I think two two things that we share like a huge passion in, obviously, skateboarding and sneakers. Yeah. And I think in in a time and era where uh, people were, were like finally willing to accept and embrace really how connected those two things were. Um, you know, I think you, you played a major component in that, you know what I'm saying? Especially the, not the traditional skate sneaker, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the, the shoes that we love, you know? So, um, I'm just curious, like, what, you know, was that a, you know, like a, you know, like a concentrated effort to, to pull those two worlds together way back when, you know, when you first got started? I think in the way of putting what was on my inside out, yeah. So there wasn't a master plan of, oh, I'm going to bring juxtaposition to the fold because juxtaposition is badass. It was more that that's what my interests always seemed to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you and I, we have skate roots, true skate roots, Mm -hmm. So initially, I don't know about you, when I started out, it wasn't cool to do anything that wasn't rooted in skate. Yeah. So it it did not make any kind of sense to be thinking about using stuff that weren't skate founded brands. Yeah. And then at a certain point, I don't know, you're you're pulling in outside influences. And uh, yeah, I mean, what you're kind of making mention of, of putting out the video project that I first uploaded to the internet and made these episodes called Maestro Knows. This was the the world people first saw it as this Nike Air Yeezy video where I tried to dunk in the shoes. So this didn't even show me as a skateboarder yet. Yeah, yeah. A couple of weeks later it did as I used the next colorway to go skate down Sunset and, mm-hmm. and different things with it. So yeah, in, in that regard, straight from jump, it was. Yeah. It was sneaker culture um, applied to youth because I was super young at the yeah. time. And sort of putting a twist on a medium that was really fresh at the time. Yeah. Because, yeah, people had made different kinds of home style videos like camcorders and whatever were super available. This was 2009. Um though the selfie thing was was probably very infant yeah. at that mm-hmm. point. And so doing that, like talking to the camera and uh, <laughs> uh, my thing was I love Los Angeles and I'm not from here. From Vegas? Uh, Arizona. Oh, oh that, yeah. I bet. I lived in Las Vegas a bit as well. And... I love Los Angeles so much and it was already so exciting for me. I'm living there three years at this point. 
So I wanted to promote the city and I also wanted my own reality TV show. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so my thing was, oh, I'm just going to make examples of, you know, how cool my life is or how cool I want it to be. Cause I was really big on speaking things into existence. Mm -hmm. Well, another way of speaking things is to, to go do things. Right. Actually that's the saying, right? Doing things into existence. Yeah. I never realized that until just now. The speaking stuff, it's, I think it's a, a real self-talk idea. If you tell yourself, then you believe. Yeah. If you believe, you can do. So, yeah, that thing birthed. And, and then from there, it came real natural as I just hustled my way into knocking them out. By that time, I had already been in the city for a few years and was met so many awesome, creative individuals. That, that, that was a... That was a fun time in LA too. Like oh, all man. of the things that were, <laughs> you know, I was, I had mentioned to someone else on a previous episode was the, you know, it was such a young time period for a lot of things, especially in, in worlds that we'd enjoyed from, you know, music with guys like Pac Div and you got the gourmet guys over in Sunset Plaza doing shoes. And, you know, I just always like the, sh the shot of you switch from boarding that, that one rail in the, in, in the easy, that, that always stuck out to me. Cause it was like, you know, we grew up, you know, for one, it was like, I didn't always skate in the shoes that, that were like the popular. Yeah. I kind of had to skate in what I had by necessity. My mom couldn't always find yeah. skate shoes. Come to find out a lot of the, my influences, the skaters I grew up looking up to skated in these non-traditional shoes, non-traditional skate shoes, you know, like some, like once I knew better, it was like a Jordan four was always like the best skate shoe, but it still was like, there's, there was still this like gate around that type of idea being accepted within skate, you know? Yeah. So it was, it, it was just such a cool moment to me. And it always stuck with me and, you know, like, just like, wow, this guy switched front boarding in like the most sought after sneaker at the, you know, maybe to this time period. That still is probably one of the most yeah. sought after sneakers. So, yeah, that that was cool. And, and then obviously to see the way that helped evolve and shape a lot of things that you have always wanted to do and continue to do to this day, yeah. you know, moving forward is, is pretty awesome. A fucking skate, a skateboard is like, you know, if you know how to use it right, it will, it will open a lot of, a lot of doors, you know, it's, you it's know, just something that not everybody understands, but they can re respect and appreciate, bro, you know, the thing that I think is such a trip. Cause I didn't even really realize I don't pay attention to fashion that much. And I'm, I was never really into sneaker culture. I just happened to know some people that have some weight and some life in, in that space. So I didn't really even understand the whole wave of how influential the skate look became. Oh man. And you know, Thrasher becoming yeah. like Spitfire head, Thrasher logo, and a few others. And then they're making that shoe that looked like the Osiris one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was ridiculous. So right. it was, it's really cool to see all that. Cause for me, I'd love skateboarding to be the biggest thing in the world. I never had that complex of like, oh, underground cool guy stuff. Mm. And I thought it was really neat. So the, the real misconception that, or maybe just people never, it's something people never think about it because they've not done it. Do you ever think about this or tell people <clears throat> I've, I've found myself realizing my threshold in my comprehension of pain is Probably, you know how they be saying like 0 0.01 on OnlyFans, like oh, yeah, yeah. Top, top percentage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm trying to say that the amount of times that my body has hit the ground in a violent way. Mm. <laughs> and you, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, like anyone who has skateboarded yeah. for 10 plus years, yeah. the pain that you have felt is no human being should yeah. experience like mm, that amount yeah. of pain. And granted, like these fighters and all these people, y'all, it's crazy, right? Come on, man. You're hitting solid earth yeah. at like high speeds 
and in just horrible ways. <laughs> well, that's th- this. This teaches you nothing will check fragility. Any, anybody like falling on a skateboard. I just said this to, to Tony Vitello. Okay, that runs Thrasher. He was. We were just talking about. Um, he's he's over like getting over an injury right now, and he's like, I'm just getting back on the board, and he's like. Man, once you get back home, nothing will bring a human being back down to earth like falling on a skateboard. Oh, and I can't imagine doing it now because I haven't really fallen hard like that in, you know, five to ten years. I used to be doing that daily. It just makes me think because there are certain, I I got so fortunate. I never broke anything. I never tore anything. So my pain was just constant bruising, twisting, just stuff like that. Yeah, cutting and all this. I can only imagine the, the few things that I have that are long-term. I know that's from skateboarding, yep. just little numb nerves and things. Bro, what some of these people are going through, like, you know, the the, the, the types of risks <clears throat> that, that people like Nyjah and Rowley. And oh, man, this is one <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yo, so it, that is the biggest thing that skateboarding has taught me in my life. Because you learn a hustle and... Uh, a desire mm-hmm. that I certainly wouldn't have gained through anything else I have done. If I took a different path in life, maybe I'd learn something through something else. And not like that one, bro. Mm. That's a, that's a, you bring up a good point too, uh, which I think, I, I think this is a good question for you. Like the, the process, I mean, as a kid, we all made skate videos, sponsor me tapes. That's Your homie's why, making that's a video. Why I'm here. That's, that's what I'm saying. That, there's a certain appreciation from that process that it teaches you that for even for me, I'm a 40 year old man. It's still applicable in everything that we work on, whether I'm working on some shit around the house, mm-hmm. whether I'm doing, building something with my daughter or showing her something. Do you, is that, that process is still applicable for you to this day with. Yeah. It's, it's making, such a mental it is, set. Huh? It's such a mental set. Yeah, it, emotional as well. Like when I was a kid, you sit there, and I would sit in, the night before. If I wanted to skate a spot on Saturday, I couldn't sleep Friday. <laughs> you know, you're 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 mm, uh, interesting. You, I'm di- you're dialing in the photographer and filmer that's going to meet you on Saturday. Mm. You're getting warmed up. You get to the spot. You're rolling up to the. Object. Bro, I don't think any of my friends growing up planned like that. Nah, <laughs> hey. I think I had to hit everybody the hey. day of. Right? Yeah, right. See, like, let's go. Philly at that point was such a a melting pot. Oh, you know? it's true. It's Stevie. It's Josh. It's every filmer and photographer under the sun. And it's, you know, so it was. You almost had to do that to make sure that you you got your your time with the people that you needed to that. get your okay. time in with. So I so yeah. I um. I bought my first camera at probably 15 or something from Circuit City. That's awesome. I had a, what do they call it? A, um, a demo model or an open oh, box. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, no, it wasn't open box. It was like um, the shelf model. Uh-huh. Yeah. I forget what they call that. There was a term for it. I don't even remember. It was probably three hundred dollars or something. It was a pre VX. This is like oh yeah. Well, no VX. High. No VX was out. All right. That you and you and a thousand plus right there. Yeah. Now my first thing was uh, it was not high eight. It was mini DV. Gotcha. I think my family had a high eight camera, so maybe I used that for a second. And but you already need a mini DV. Yeah. So I saved up. I got that. I want to say it was a JVC. JP. <laughs> JSP. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have this like uh, rig the the fisheye lens on it or, or anything? Yeah, but I had the fake fisheye. Right. Like, that's <laughs> that's money again. You yeah, gotta, you yeah. Gotta wait until you can get a good fisheye. Yeah. I just had you know somewhat of a wide angle lens, and then yeah, and then I really realized oh I need this. I but I got I at the same time like the one with the the frosted oh, color yeah, yeah, shell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got a movie, so I'm simultaneously learning. The process, editing, all that. And really quick, really quick. Like, Max out iMovie in a couple months. You're not in L.A. yet at this point. Nah, this was Vegas. Gotcha. And then I saved up enough. I got VX2000. Gotcha. Couldn't get 1000. <laughs> Forgot for what reason. Because, you know, the one was always more desirable. Yeah, yeah. But the two was just available like that. Got the two, which was money. I was probably like $1,500, $1,800. Uh-huh. 
Got that. Still had fake death lens, though. <laughs> Couldn't afford that yeah. one, man. And, um, yeah, so that's really why I'm here. Because if I never started filming skate videos, I don't know that... I totally grew up watching music videos uh. during school hours. Um, all three channels, right? MTV, BET, BET and VH1. VH1. Yep. Quick sidebar. I seen Jimmy on 106 in Park. Somewhere in those years, 2000, was it 2006? When you yeah, guys went on there, with yeah, the yeah. ice cream? This guy is <laughs> doing things early. That was a trip. <laughs> you want to talk about me, Pioneer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I had the interest in the Hollywood entertainment music space. And after high school, I moved, I moved to San Diego. I had a few sponsors. I tried to do my thing. All the kids that I knew were so much better than me. And skateboarding is an interesting place now because it's almost not about how good you are. It's about mm. the brand and the swag, mm. which I think is really cool. But skateboarding was evolving at that point. Oof. But don't get it twisted. You were good, yo. Yeah, yeah. You were good. I was good enough to, you know, get a little ways. And maybe if I had my whole heart set on it, um, I could have gotten through. Yeah. Though I just looked around. I thought, man... Everybody's so good. Mm. This is dangerous. And I want to make real money in life. Yep. Yeah, skateboarding, <laughs> it's, it's, it's probably the most hardest thing to make a living off you, of if you're not. The stars have to align. If you're yeah. not Paul, if you're not There's Nigel. not a lot of room for big money mm. brand name people. At least certainly at the time. Now things are more open all around. Yeah. You could just, there's certain brands now where the skateboarders that they're not good enough by 10 years ago standards to be pro. But now because people are more into swag, mm. not even in a demeaning way, straight up, like people who got swag and awareness and just some kind of interest, you can make a play at that. Yeah. And that's really neat to me. So I, I switched and I said, man, I'm going to Los Angeles and I'm going to figure out how to direct music videos and that's what turned me into all this interest. Mm. And I'm just a real curious, hopefully loving human. So I got to know a lot of people just by being in the city, working in restaurants and um, cruising around. So by the time it came to me to, to make this idea of making these sort of home videos about myself and my friends, it was a really great fit. And yeah. It's interesting because it didn't really dawn on me until like before you pulled up, I was like, let me, let me, let me look at one of Levi's like previous <clears throat> interviews or something. So I was listening to the Jeff one and it was like, it was, a, it is a selfie video, but I feel, so but it was like those, I don't know. There was a certain way that you shot them and edited them that it didn't like, it felt it felt inclusive with the environment or the topic as much as it did you, you know, and they were very warming and welcoming and, and exciting and fun. I yo. love this. Okay. Yeah, I swear to God, yo, I, th I thought they were the coolest fucking thing in the world. I, I cuss on here. Sorry. So um, <laughs> I, lo I love that because of your description. No one can change that. It is valid exactly as it is. I swear to God. And there's no invalidating it. And to me, that's what is so, my mind has progressed to a point where I would have used to like if someone thought that they were the best vlogs or the best selfie videos ever. And I think that's tight. And now I don't believe in that because there is no best. Yeah. And there is no right and no wrong. Mm. And the way that I can get up on my soapbox and like have my thing is by feeling that yes, what I brought is so uniquely made by me. Mm -hmm. And today I think that's more important than ever because in 23, if you're not doing something that is so the way that you would do it, um, I don't find a lot of weight in it. Well, you think, think about these phones and all of the, the platforms that are on here that give people the ability to show and share whatever it is they want with the world. You know, I think you you were so early at showing people insight into 
full cultures and businesses and people and things like you were like doing it for them, which what people do now all day, every day. When you, you know, say like, for them, do you mean for the people in the company or for the audience? For the audience, for the, for the people that are fans of, of these different things. And for the kid that wants to know more about, um, Dom Kennedy, mm -hmm. you know, or wants to know more about young Michael you're working with or any of these topics, you know, it was like, like, wow, somebody's opening, somebody's like opening the door to show more of these communities. And it's like, I don't know, there was just something always very personal and inviting about them, you know, and, you know, it, it didn't, it, to see everything you've built, you built for yourself from, you know, from product to Vans collaborations. Oh, by the you know, way, you Vans know, like, boys. So, you know, like, that's what, <laughs> we in, you know, we in an alumni, um, bro. You know that, right? We are. Yeah, I, I got to show you something. together in the alumni. Now. I got to show you is something yours real vault quick. As well, it is a vault. It's vault. Yeah, it's got to be vault. Vault alumni. This was January twentieth, two thousand and eleven. Oh my gosh! Damn. Oh yeah, on the roof that night. On, I remember it, that. Yeah, the floor. And I was like, "Can you see that, Ty?" All right. It's uh, like that. You have brought that watch for me and I was so psyched. I was like, this is like, you know, we are, we get a lot of, even back then it was like, we had our hands in a lot of free mm -hmm. product and stuff. Yeah. But the, there was something about this idea, which I'm pretty sure you're really re-releasing right now. No. Yeah. That's a way of saying it. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, I was so psyched, you know? And, um, like I said, the vans, everything, it was, it was a no brainer. I was like, this guy's built an incredible idea and name and th to see it then translate beyond the, beyond film to actual products was really cool. You know? So it's all of which why I'm so psyched you're here today. Uh, for real. I, uh, I always been a little off. Um, I've been, I've been the person who, who goes and tells the girl exactly how I feel about her instead of playing a cool or waiting for the girl to come to me, I come and I explain to her how I feel and why I feel that way. And then what's she going to do with it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> gotcha. You got to be up front, yo. Yeah, so, uh. so for me, bringing things in front of people is a process that I think a lot about. And I don't identify with this perfectionist idea because <laughs> I don't feel like I ever be close to that. And there is no perfecting something because as soon as something exists, it changes. Yep. Mm. So if I'm making video, if I'm making an uh, idea in the form of product, okay, now I just told you what it is. They're all ideas. I'm always showing an idea. It exists through a different format. Mm -hmm. And really, the digital stuff is so exciting to me because I'm trying to be responsible and thoughtful and less wasteful. So, yeah, the the thing that you just mentioned that looked like a watch, I am, I made some and I, I'm going to offer them again, at least for a little bit, because there's not that many of them. Because that was one of the most special things that I had connection with people. Most everyone who bought them did it with their heart. I mm -hmm. could feel it. They identify because they love something in their life. Eh, everybody loves something. Like, I'm, I'm out here kidding, you know. <laughs> I'm giving people yeah. a way to love something. Though, when you really, you know, we are very fortunate you you have a business that you find stimulating and you you found an idea in your mind or in your chest and you made actions and efforts to bring it into existence. Mm. There's so many people in the world that never get to do that. Man. And for whatever sure. reasons, there's a lot of reasons under the sun. Though we have all experienced that now. And so... Yo, that's one of those things. You'll always take for granted everything that is possible to be taken for granted. Mm -hmm. it, I guess then it's a it's a percentage game. <laughs> <laughs> How often can you stay aware 
how often can you, um, one of my biggest points of exercise lately in life is being open-minded because I would like to be that way. And if I am that way, then I have to continually do so. Mm. So how do I become open-minded? <clears throat> I noticed that by being willing to take perspective and plural perspectives, yep. because there's an infinite amount of them, of course. this allows me to experience qualities that I really value. Joy, mm -hmm. um, gratefulness, appreciation, empathy, so, this is a good. I don't know where I was yeah. really going. No, with no, that. no, 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 no. I don't okay. know if there's a no. way to circle in. Nah, that's, I, that's that's some of how I feel lately. Yeah. No, I um, I think just thinking back what you said about about those that that got the infinite pieces, like I, I've for me especially as um, I I think I I think a lot of the things that we I would say we design or we make a lot of them are come out of are inspired by my appreciation for other people and other things that have had impacted on me. And then what motivates that is, the, is people that are willing, like people work fucking hard for their money. Like the value of $1 as a result of whatever it is they do on a daily basis. And they're willing to put that forth towards whatever it is, whether it's, as it's a, a, you know, a timepiece from you, a sweatsuit from us, a van shoe. It's like I'm, nothing, that that motivates me more than anything you know what i'm saying it's like being the ability to to pay om, like homage to to a Gino Iannucci mm. or a Josh Kalis or a Stash you know um you know and i think that's reciprocal in, in your value and appreciation for those that get behind your ideas and and products that you've put forth so yeah it, mm. it's a there's a duality there cuz I always am super turned about doing things exactly the way that I want them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard not. Yeah. Yeah. Because, um, I said this on video one time. I really love it. So I'm going to tell you, I have a hard time thinking that Picasso painted certain pictures because he thought more people would like them. Or that Tupac wrote lyrics because he thought more people would feel them. Maybe both yeah. of them did. And thinking about it, maybe they did. From watching Tupac interviews and reading about Picasso and stuff, these dudes just, to me, they look, they looked that they couldn't bleed or breathe anything but what they were feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I would like to operate on that level. So I just always thought, yo, the style of the videos in the beginning, yeah, it was me filming myself with a wide angle lens. You know, when you land a trick in skateboarding, you turn that camera around and you put the hand over it or you claim it for your, your yeah. homie. That's how I knew that that frame was even possible. So I had that multiplied with music from music video style. People aren't talking in music videos, they're performing, they're dancing. And so I was aligning the things that I was familiar with. That was direct influence. Yeah. I wasn't even really creating a style thoughtfully. I was just doing the one that seemed really tight yeah. to me. And then it, it kind of did do that accidentally. And um, I thought, yo, this is, Really, this feels great. And that's all I needed. I just wanted myself to be happy. That's the most important yeah. thing. Showing this. That's the most important thing. And I don't think I don't think you end up on, on Fox Sports with a ticker telling about the NBA and the UFC showing the same. Why well, you got good memory. That, dude, because I'm like, yo, this shit is exactly. You were, yo, we were watching football? Amazing. Yeah, like, I'm like, this is amazing, yo. Like, this is, you know, to watch this, this young man that's built this from this level to this level, you know, I'm like, this is 
monumental, yo. You know, like whether people have told you that or not to me, I was always like, these are, this is, these are incredible strides. Like if, if I'm Levi's mom and dad, I'm fucking, I'm so happy and proud of him, you know? And then obviously seeing the growth to the point where I'm like, oh, this guy doesn't even care about social media anymore. <laughs> He's not even making anything for here to be for the, for the YouTubes and the Vimeos. Like He's making big screen shit nowadays for big campaigns and big projects and everything like that. There's a growth that is commendable and inspirational on so many levels with, with when, what you've done in your story. So that's why, that's why I was so excited you're here. Cause I'm like, I've watched this guy with my own eyes go from the ground level in the trenches to the biggest platforms, you know, that I only know about, you know, like that I'm sure there's a lot of things that we don't know that you're working on that are awesome. So Yes, I'm it's in. it's right in front of me. I'm working on this. Mostly in this area, a there little here. Uh, yeah, it's it's been the last years have been uh, so much things. Mm -hmm. I mean, at this point they have for all of us now, the last three years, right? Since 2020 mm -hmm. has been pretty bizarre for most people for sure. alive. Yeah. Um Yeah, it, life is uh, so, <laughs> such a journey, man. Yeah, for sure. For, I know you got a busy ass schedule for- No, I'm straight. Oh, Actually, right. too, I wanted to start early because I thought I had to be somewhere at five and I'm right. free today, so no rush. For, for, for any young man or woman that, or, you know, young boy or girl that is in a place that a young Levi Maestro was once in with- the way the the foundations of media are today, what advice would you give them? Like what, um, what, what would the what would the 18 year old Levi Maestro say to the kid at, at 2000 in 2023? Yeah, maybe two things. What I because I'll just say what I told myself. Um, my biggest regret, and I believe in regret. I love it, actually. Because it is powerful. Oh, for sure. I think it's a thing that we run from because we're scared of it. You gotta acknowledge it. Because it's, yeah, it's no fun. Who wants to admit, like, oh, I regret this? Mm -hmm. Discipline, man. Discipline, yep. Mm. It is just got to be the most helpful quality oh, for sure. that yeah. you could put forth for yourself. It is so difficult, I think, to hit a lick. And when you do, it's simultaneously difficult to mm. keep it going. Mm -hmm. So if you don't use everything within you and that doesn't mean working self to the bone you know acting crazy whatever not sleeping just going inside to pull everything that you can and put it forward in this vein that you have found yourself in that is working or you're finding fulfillment within Yeah, you let a distraction creep in and start peeling away and uh, it doesn't help. Mm -mm. So I would still, and that's what I'm super on the search for at this point, because 23, it's easier to be distracted than ever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. And it's, it's so pattern driven. I also don't believe in addiction anymore. Because it's a construct. <laughs> it's a word. And I find that we as humans, we, we love answers. Because when you have an answer, you don't have to think about it anymore. Uh -huh. You've, you know why. We know so much stuff, bro. So if someone tells me, oh, you use social media too much, you're addicted to it. So I'm an addict. 
Uh, I'm, uh, I'm an addict. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh okay. So am I an addict the same way I'm a filmmaker? Or the same yeah. way I'm a skateboarder or the same way I'm a male yeah. human being. That's pretty bizarre because yeah. that's an identity. When if I don't use social media tomorrow or forever from tomorrow, would I still be addicted to it? Good question. It's an action yeah. Yeah. and a behavior. So I don't like to look at things, especially things that people do as actions or behaviors as their identity. Because if someone's mean to me one time and I'm thinking, that guy's an asshole. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe he was just mean to me that day. Yeah. Or maybe the way I perceived it was yeah. mean. And if it is possible to change my behavior and my efforts towards something, what am I capable of doing? I'm capable of changing my results. So that's why this idea of what's success, what's happiness, what do you want out of life? Nobody really knows, Nobody. bro. We're, was it? At straws? Grasping? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Because we're going off a feeling that we have right now. Yeah. And that's why I think emotions are so fun and powerful. Yeah. Because they can drive you towards things. And some people are able to lock in. And I think that's the people that we see go really far and accomplish a lot. And I compare myself and my output to the different amounts that I have previously achieved. Mm. I believe if I've done it at a certain capacity at one point in time, I'm capable of repeating it. Yeah, for sure. I don't compare my potential, like what I'm thinking about in my mind is possible. I like daydreaming. It's cool. It is cool. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it comes around to that and you realize, oh, yeah, for sure. So the other thing then discipline is I would tell myself, who do you most? You can use so many words for this. Who do you most respect? Who do you most love? Who do you most want to listen to? So probably some type of mentor figure best friend, mm -hmm. parent, sibling. I know who the person is for me now. Who, who, could you mind sharing who was that for you? Yeah, it's, uh, his name is Sean Meenan. He's a friend of mine and brother, mentor, so many things. Something about our relationship, we have always clicked. I don't believe that we've ever had an ill moment. And I, the, the way that I receive what he sends my way is, I, I don't understand why I value it the way that I do. I mean, I have an idea, a lot of ideas, though I just... It's, it was given to me. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you find your mentor or if they find you or your Jedi or yeah. your angel, you know. I would have loved to pick his brain constantly and have him kind of evaluate what I'm doing and ask him to hold me accountable. And I don't know if he would have done it, though is a lot of people who can give you good advice. That's not, I'm, hey, maybe that is tough for some people. I've had a lot of people tell me things that would have worked for me. And I've even told myself a ton of this stuff. How, how long have you been rocking with him for? Uh, 14, 13, Damn. 14 years. Quite awesome. some time. Yeah. So... It, so many times we're we're in our own way mm. and man a lot of the time too I spent so much of my life really opinionated bro just functioning so deeply in my own opinion mm. thankfully I'm coming away from that recently I find that it's more healthier for myself and for everyone around me it's easier to 
coexisting is way easier that way. <laughs> like things that just are, they are. Then that's the way they are. You know, whether it's, I don't know. Meta, I mean, something as simple as the way somebody skateboards <clears throat> to like, you know, maybe the way somebody designs or even as simple as some, you know, how certain people carry themselves. Like I, I learned like letting just you got you can't do anything more than just let these things be what they are you can't change them you're not going to change them you know and it just allows me to navigate everything else that much smoother um yeah you get really into layers right yeah. it's so refined because can you change anything can you control anything mm-hmm. yes yeah, certainly there's certain decisions that you can make that you have pretty good range over deciding so I think it's really valuable if if you can make a choice for yourself who you will listen to mm. and that person because you feel that they're mm. giving you a great perspective I think that's highly valuable it's, you know learning is no fun Not hell when no. you don't want to learn mm. yeah. I find Learning is no fun for me <laughs> when I don't want to learn. For sure. I need to personalize yeah. that. Yeah. And I wish that it was. Yeah. Some people, wow, they get so far in life because they are so damn smart and excel in really driven ways because they love it. It's just, I want to read books and I want to listen to right. um, people talk. And yeah. I'm just thinking, really? I want to do my, I want to make my own. I don't want to take more in. That's why I'm so bothered with this whole consumption thing. Mm. Because I'm thinking, why am I doing this? This is such the antithesis of what I'm about. I Bro, I've read maybe five books in my whole life. And I'm kind of proud of that. Because I just think, why do I want to take other people's stuff in? I have so much to get out Changing our approach is difficult, yeah. How yeah. much time, how many books could I have read if I traded it out for all my social media time? Yeah. Oh, man. That could be a real oh, whiz. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. about that with rap lyrics, yeah. you know, how how amazing, how much knowledge could I have if I could trade out all the 2000s rap lyrics that I know for just no good <laughs> yeah. reason that I have memorized and a song comes on, I can just rap all the verses. Why do I know this? Yeah. I used to, I, I used to, my life used to be the, all my timelines used to be based off of lyrics for so many years. Oh. Now it's moved into a different section where now I remember everything based off of fucking clothes and sneakers I've released over the past six or seven years. You know, like I could, re- I could go back three, four years with him and it'll be like, God, the fuck do you I just usually, that, you know refer to yeah. him. I'm like, Hey, what happened during this time? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, let me think back. Um, are you, are you from Los Angeles? I'm from LA. Yeah. Tell me your, cause this is pretty much my favorite city in the world. Yep. It's for sure. My favorite quality of life I've ever experienced. For sure. sure. It offers everything. I, I tell people it caters to any way that you want to live. Yeah, like, I don't true. think that's much of an exaggeration. Yeah. What do you love most about this place? Ah, uh, LA. I'd say like the pace is your own pace. Mm-hmm. Like you get to choose your own pace. Mm-hmm. And then I also think like it's a place where you can kind of just do whatever you want or how you, like you were saying, like how you feel, but like whoever wants to be a part of it will be a part of it and whoever doesn't want to do it. And it's like, there's no judgment. It's like, kind of like, do what you want. Hmm. It's always been chill here for me, I think for me. It was just, everything's about being chill. So, yeah. And what, cause you, you've been here like 15? 15 years now, yep, since 08. Yeah. yeah. I, I, and I always tell kids, this city will give, <clears throat> This city gives back to you what you put into it more than any place I've ever visited in my life. Mm-hmm. And I mean that from from a professional standpoint to the people that you meet. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you will open up and go visit and 
go into different neighborhoods and be, you know what I'm saying? Like the love that you show people here, some of my closest friends are people born and raised here from all throughout the city, you know, that side of the 10, the West side, Northeast LA, Pasadena, you know, it's like, it's definitely one of those cities. If you're willing to hustle, if you're really willing to put the work in and the dedication, like you said, and stay disciplined, it will, it, it finds its way to pay itself back. I remember when I first, when ice cream was first done, I took a, I took a job with Disney. I was making more money than I'd ever oh, made. Oh, on the TV show. On the TV show. True. On the week, I was making probably a buck and a quarter a year from skateboarding. That's, that, that is like yeah, incredible money. Especially. I didn't know what, I did, really didn't know what was to that do. that right in the front of the recession too? That was in the mid, in the heart of it. So. <laughs> Bro, me too. I Dude. accidentally, I went from making. Uh, Let's call it your average income salary to 10x Man. in one year. I didn't know how to act, Levi. I, <laughs> I, all I knew was pay as much rent ahead that you could. So I was paying nine tenths months, nine, 10 months worth of rent. Oh, I wasn't. Because I didn't that. know, you know, I was like, wow, this is like, this is, this is Disney television money. I was so scared. I was working on the weekends at Urban Outfitters folding t-shirts. Cause I was like, you know what? You, things are going too good. You gotta find other ways to stay grounded. I remember people walking into this Urban on Melrose and being like, Jimmy, is everything all right? <laughs> oh, you <laughs> were you cool? The Urban on Melrose? Like, are you, like, is everything, are you straight right now? Like, they, like cats really thought I was fucked up. But then I also realized uh, a lot of cats I'm around this would come off to them as if I was doing bad. I'm actually doing better than I've ever done in my whole you life. You was doing that for... Man, I did it for two... I, I was on the Disney show for four, almost four years, and I was working at Urban for damn near two. It's simultaneous? Simultaneous. On the weekends. I didn't have no days off. Why would you do that, though? This <laughs> I just is, had this. No, no, no. I'm not I, talking about a regular job simultaneous. I mean, that one specifically, that seems hectic. Man, that was hectic. No, it was hectic. It was insane, yo. The stuff I would Ugh. see on a regular basis. And on top of it, Mark that gives us the Modellos. I was delivering, he has a, a marketing company called Cogent. Mm -hmm. I would be delivering drinks for him late mm. night for like he, you know, if, if Adam Levine was having a party or so, you know, I was I like, I did it once. I had um, 17 jobs before I made video money. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and I started making video money at 22, I think. So that work ethic stays with you, man. It goes from, yeah. it was already in you and it stays with Same you. Same though, it throughout. happened for me in 09, bro. In recession. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I even made real money. So that was whatever you want yeah. to believe in. Some Something, someone was looking out for me. I think I saw you in 09 at, at Vegas at the Cosmo. Like you literally walked in. This was during like the beginning parts of your video. Okay. And I was at, I was at the, I think it was magic show right. or like project or something. That's when the agenda started like yeah, yeah. popping up. And then yeah. I think I saw you and I was like, oh shit. I saw that guy in the video. Well, which were you doing? I was just the at, same, um, develop, developing clothing or yeah, but brand during that time I was like more like a manufacturer. So I was just going to see clients and customers and. Wow. Things like that. But yeah, I remember seeing you at Cosmo <laughs> right at the lobby. <laughs> Epic. It was, like I, and you pulled up in like a, a big ass Escalade or like one of those um, hotel cars for sure. Really? Yeah. It might have been a Gatorade thing we were doing. I don't remember. Yeah. 9, 10, 11 blend together. Cause Same with me. Yeah. It's all Yep. It was really so busy. fast, huh? It was really busy. But that's when I was, that's what I was during that time period. I was like, yo, I'm, I'm paying attention to what this kid Levi is doing. And it's, it's awesome, yo. Yeah. Um, um, it was, you know, it, it was that like, it was a very specific time period. It was like a lot of things were changing. A lot of things were evolving, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and you were way ahead of the curve with a lot of, a lot of shit. So same bro I feel that was a really interesting thing too about our time bracket in skateboarding is that it wasn't really tight to do anything else than skateboarding no, hell no nah that's you know mm. so coming out to 
I mean, especially you, because you came from the East Coast. Um, and then the sidebar, you had that Miami moment way oh, early. Oh, yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Like, way early. That was right. Um, <laughs> well, I would go down there a lot Jimmy for skating. Miami. But, like, in the wintertime, I tried to sneak down there because Miami had spots. So, mm-hmm. and it, between Such the period, place. between the time I moved from L.A., from Philly to L.A., I went down there for a little while. And um, just, like, a lot of kids I skated with were, were there chilling. So, yeah. So, you uh, you know, you you really engineered a, a way for yourself because skateboarding and skateboarders I feel weren't very open-minded and imagine before us it was like really yeah. really core because they developed it mm. they brought it alive when I was in Miami I was working at a sneaker store I was interning at a PR company and and another friend of mine owned a promotional company for anything like <laughs> dog block parties given out whatever yo candy whatever he was mm. his, that his little promotional company was promoting at the right, time right, right. You know, but it's like, that's all we knew is like, hustle, 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 be resourceful. You got to yeah. do. Connecting the dots. You got to cool. do what you got to yeah, do yeah. to get by, yo. And, and now uh, it's a trip seeing people like Evan Mock. Oh, yeah. I know, you know, his yeah. different friends and family a, a bit older than him and seeing him come out and be from such a remote place mm-hmm. and come penetrate the big cities and then just, bro, nobody is... Nobody is him. No, nobody. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. And he's wow. he's cracking so crazy. To see and you th- can just see he's mad comfortable. Yeah. He's being him. And all of those kids, man. Even, you know, uh, you know, even I mean, obviously a lot of it, I feel like a lot of it goes back to to Virgil. Like, you know, even seeing Virgil having like Stevie and Kareem in his sure. shows, like yeah. You know, but to see, especially these young kids, to see where they're existing at is like incredible. Yo. Yeah, That's because like, too the the pace is not the same. Nah, uh-uh. because some of them really, really shred. Yeah, mm. <laughs> but some of them are so popular they don't really don't have to be that amazing. Right, right, yeah, right, right. You know, so That's when yeah. you got that that duality. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, yeah. there. Those are those are different people. Yeah, <laughs> I'm psyched for these kids. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for them. Yo. And like, just the whole thing as a whole, though. Mu- can you imagine what the market share must be between now, five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen oh, years man, ago? Yeah. Skateboarding business as a whole. Come on, yep. I mean, mm-hmm. unfortunately, it went to a few brands more so overall, though clothing wise now. Yeah. I mean, it's what a trip, bro. So many of them have their own brands. It's like at that point, I would the last thing I'd be thinking about would be operating a business and screen printing boards and shit and tees <laughs> and stuff. But yeah. The swag is um, so different. Yeah, yeah. You had a checkout, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, that was my main thing as a kid. I'm gonna I'm go through, I'm gonna get my Same. trans world checkout, my thrasher checkout, my slap checkout. And what is skateboarder? It was a cohort. Skateboarder. Yes, yeah, I had cohorts with, with KT. Yeah. So I was thinking, yeah, getting a video part, getting a feature. And then now it don't matter. It's just nah, yeah. you can't iPhone video straight to Instagram. And what are you any more different than some other like these kids yeah. in different countries? Oh, yeah. Bro, some of these goofy footed kids yeah. from Belgium and Spain. Oh, yeah, they're ridiculous. Yo, yeah. I love it. Uh, the swag is so yeah. crazy. They're on another level. Because in, in our time, mm-hmm. it was more, oh, the, the steezy guys you had that weren't like as good because their tricks just weren't out there as you had what? Kenny Reed, Matt Field. Yeah. Like these kind of yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Matt Field. Yeah, yeah Matt, Matt Field. Yeah. I was thinking yeah. Matt Beach. Yeah. No, no, Matt, Matt Beach Matt, very yeah. technical. Yeah, yeah, true. yeah, those dudes, Dennis Boozen is even, which crazy because he's now more like a legacy guy with what he was able to do with the shoe and stuff. But that those dudes weren't out there like that, but they were so swaggy so, so, yeah, out yeah, the gym yeah. like you couldn't debate it. Yeah, and that was almost an even harder get to get people to see you and respect you like that yeah or you didn't have to be throwing yourself down <laughs> yeah yeah no it's there's there's that's there's a lot of layers to that onion the social uh, thing really changed it up though yeah, for sure it's people perceiving this i mean bro the thrashers thing is just 
What in the world? I know. It's amazing. I had a, we, we had, when that Vans project came out, I had shot Tony, the, we made a little skate video with Dick Rizzo and a couple guys. And, um, and, and them throwing it up there, the amount of people that hit me like, yo, I seen the video on thrasher.com. Like this, yeah. the amount of people that it was a big deal to. I was like, yo, I'm from the era where like, we had, we were trying to get in the magazine. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like to see like that, to some of these kids that translate to, I guess to be, to being actually, actually making it to print. I was like, that's I'm a so trip. Happy. <laughs> I'm so happy that it went to them. Yeah. I mean, not specifically just cause they are core. So the fact that they're the most, I would say, right, they're the most influential yes. skateboarding <clears throat> video outlet. And then also name brand. Yeah. What do you associate anymore with skateboarding and Thrasher at this point, right? So, yeah, yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah. I just, I miss all the mags in general. I miss Skateboarder oh, was my time. favorite, though. I liked how yeah. thin it was. Yeah. It was a bit bigger than uh, all Yeah, of them. yeah. They had the best layouts. Uh, <laughs> everyone, you you were either a trans world guy or a Thrasher mm -hmm. guy or Skateboard Mag was later. Uh, I really liked Slap too. Lance Dolls did a great sure. job with Slap. So I even caught the tail end of Big Brother a little bit. Big Brother was good. But I, I avoided Big Brother like the plague because if you did a checkout with them, Chris Naraco, Chris is still a really good friend of mine. He would find out the, the wildest thing about oh, your background right. nah, and then tease nah. you in the interview about it. And I was like... <laughs> nah, you're not doing this to me. Bro. I, uh, I, just, I needed, <laughs> but they all, were funny though. They were. Funny. I needed all the skateboarding. Yeah, things, yeah. Know? And um, I wanted to go LA real quick though, because you know I love it like that. So I want you guys to give me your favorite spot to eat. Just oh, just one, maximum two. And uh, again, it ain't on the best. It's your favorite. What spots you really go all the time? I probably go to El Cochinito. Right there in um in Silver Lake on Sunset. I've never been Cuban there. spot fire. Cuban spot. Really and then good. um uh Eastside Deli right down there by Dodger Stadium. Mm. Uh, okay. Italian sandwich I'm banging. Either. Yeah, no, they're so good. What about you? Uh, Momo. He puts me on all the fire Korean spots. I'd say Shinseng uh, Gumi, Yakitori, and Gardena. Have you been? <laughs> Nah, that's uh, what yeah, I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't going to Gardena for yeah. no reason. Yeah. So, so yeah. that, I would say that. And any Korean barbecue lately is just, you know, Korean barbecue is always good. Any? You can't not any, but, you, you know, because not, not, not the all you can eat. Any. For him to, you know, I trip on, like, he'll be like, how much was the, you went to Korean barbecue? How much was it at that spot? And I'd be like, oh, I was 33 a person. And he was like, when I was a kid, it was 12 a person. Like it's crazy, crazy. that disparity in the in the in the prices now is insane. It's insane. You know? Yeah, it's on. Um, uh, well, shit, Mr. Maestro, I will let you get on your way, yo. <laughs> I appreciate it. We could sit here and talk forever. Uh, True, but I really, really, I, I'm 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 so glad that you hit milk. I'm so glad that you got back to me. Um, like I said, man, you have been a huge inspiration for years, yo. So to have you here just to discuss everything, and uh, just I can't wait to see. You continue to prosper man uh, thanks uh, thanks for man. coming brother yeah, yeah open line always I'm, man. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing where are you headed to after this I mean I mean not after this but like are you traveling again yeah okay where are you headed now uh, I gotta call it I I kind of don't plan much oh okay so just kind of seeing where it goes yeah oh nice I find when I make plans Usually things get in the way. Uh -huh. Okay. Now I find also not a lot of people make plans, so it's just easier to run with it. Yeah. Um, I, got I was, I was, I want to, I, I am really looking forward to seeing what you guys are doing because also one of my friends, I shot some stuff with you, Shannon. Oh, mm. Shannon's the man, yo. Yeah. Yo, I, I, yeah, you did introduce me to Shannon. Yo, oh, really? Shannon has been, so, yo, shout out so, to so, Shannon, yo. <laughs> Shannon introduced Dude, so uh, Shannon... Yes, I loved it. We're getting yeah. this. In. No, we Shannon, when, this. when I, I was working at no one, yeah. Shannon came over. He drove all the way to Venice. <laughs> yes. And um, <laughs> man, Shannon didn't know me from a fucking hole in the wall, yo. He came and shot the studio, shot the shoes. I was like, yo, you want to go shoot some skate pictures? He's like, yeah, come on, let's go. Come to find out, we live within five minutes of each other. No way. For the past five, six years, Shannon 
I hit him the day before. How much time do you need, Jimmy? I need 30 minutes. Cool. I'm going to pull up. He leaves. Text me the pictures like <laughs> three, four hours later. You know, I ask him where these pictures were. He says, nah, that ain't that wasn't the look. You needed these pictures. <laughs> and that's been our that's been our relationship. Yo, my daughter loves Shannon. Devin loves Shannon. Yo. That's so that funny. Yo. He, he's such a beautiful human. He man. is a good dude, we man. Sure. I, that's so that's a trip. I forgot that you did introduce me to Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna not like this. I have to do it. Have you ever eaten with him? Uh I feel like I have. But he don't really eat them, right? <laughs> uh, like, I feel like we've been to restaurants and he'll just like get a water or something. I, I don't think I've ever eaten with him. And it's Damn. my ongoing joke because I try to eat with him. He's really, he, Is he he's really with specific his about his uh, food. Dude. So he just always opts not to eat. With Shannon, him. yeah. I love, <laughs> dude, look at this. Shannon, we got his picture up there on the Vans Vault thing. Oh, lovely. Yo, Shannon's, I mean, Dude, we got his pictures on the front of the Philadelphia Inquirer. Like, Ooh. we've, like, he's he's helped us on some very, like, special moments, yo. Like, he's a special person, yo. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I, and he's from L.A. Yep. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about, you know? There is no, oh, so that's the type of quality person that's from L.A.? No. It's nah. just, that's, he is who yeah. he is, yeah. and he's from here. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. Shannon said, come over to the crib one day. And I get there and he's got two, like, basically brand new pairs of ice creams from back in the day. Oh. And he was like, here, take them. Oh. And they didn't want nothing for them, yo. Like, uh, yeah, Shannon's good people, man. <laughs> um, she had our very first stuff here. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. I love clocking in on the journey because I saw you making sweatpants since I can't call it a year now. Right. And then this is my first real touch point digging in with you mm -hmm. and then wearing. And I just saw this stuff on social with kind of, I don't know what to call it. It's kind of waffle knit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and with the beanie and yep. stuff and the blankets. Wow. That's fun. Exciting. So it's cool because, you know, we can look back on this and then that's that moment in time. Yeah. You guys yeah. are going to be doing other stuff, maybe versions of it, maybe something completely different. For sure. So I just wanted to share my excitement and admiration for Thank you so much being on the, um, I'm going to call it the individual journey <laughs> you know, the creative journey. Yeah, that's great. We on individual yeah, journey. Sure. This guy's allowed me to, I think to check boxes and do things that, you know, I don't think I've ever would have been able to, you know, I feel like I've had a second career like in, in skating and everything. Thanks to the, the opportunities that this building and him inviting me to be part of it have, have right. helped me with. So yeah. Thank you, bud. Love you. Love you See, <laughs> I love this type yeah. of conversation, yeah. you know, yeah. communicating feelings and yeah. emotions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not all about uh, stats and buzzwords. Mm -hmm. Nah, hell no. <laughs> you can't, you can't operate to those constraints and confinements. It's basically like you were saying, you know, like, uh, social media of someone, Says, oh, you're an addict, or, you know, if I if I make something, and then say I make thirty awesome pictures of what I like, I'm sorry to offend you if I put up all thirty. That's nothing to do with me. That has something to do with you. <laughs> you know, like that's a way. I've been trying to I stay away from blame. Yeah, because I notice that, but usually brings out excuse or blame or both mm -hmm. and I'm really I excel at that mm -hmm. and so I notice if I blame someone or something I'm applying power to it if I'm applying power to something else I'm taking it away from myself yeah. there we go there you go I like that that's a like, nice Andy all right <laughs> I always liked when Jay-Z said it costs you nothing pay me no mind <laughs> Wait, I don't think we got a quality audio. Tell it again. I, said, I, I always loved when Jay-Z said, it costs you nothing, pay me no mind. Pay me no mind. You know? <laughs> that, and that's why there's a place for everybody in this world, you know? Yeah. Whether you fuck with something or bang with it or not, you know? Because it might not be for you, but it could be for somebody else, you know? Um, Thanks, pals. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, I appreciate bro. you, Levi. You're the fucking man.